Hello everyone, Steve here with a collection of 3D printed clocks that you can build. And I thought I would explain the differences between some of these clocks and maybe help you decide which one you might be interested in printing. If you're wondering which clock would be a good one to print, I would mostly recommend the, the clocks over here on the right. Uh, these are the, the newer designs with the easiest to build features and they'll be more reliable. That's the short answer. Let me go over a little bit more details. This was the first clock I designed, it's SP1, and then I expanded that design into SP2 and SP3. And these, the, the first clock is a free download, but it's really the most challenging to build. Uh, was simplified a fair amount on number two and three. And then I went all out on features to make a clock easy to build on what I call the easy build series. This one is number four and number five. Uh, some of the features here are no glue required, just drop in the components and parts just go together with the minimum amount of, of rework. The runtime of this clock is about eight days. And then by the time I got to the easy build clock, some of the features that make this clock easy to build also increase the runtime. This clock has a runtime of about 21 days per winding, although it's much more reliable if you run it in, the, in a mode closer to seven or eight days. The same goes with the, the smaller easy build clock. This one could have a runtime up to 32 days, but that becomes a little bit less reliable. It's much more stable in the eight to 10 day range. So after the fifth clock, then I designed a stepper motor driven clock. And this was the first iteration of the design. And I've got some other ones over here that are larger and even more impressive. After SP6, I designed an electromagnetic clock that uses the internal mechanism from a pendulum drive module, but reconfigured to run on a 3D printed clock. I find this clock to be fairly reliable. Some people find it to be a little fiddly. With fresh batteries, it runs just fine. After that came the Coupe Purdue clock, which has a unique escapement in that even though there's a second hand, when the pendulum swings in one direction, the second hand moves. And when the pendulum swings in the other direction, it doesn't move. Uh, this clock can be designed with the Coupe Purdue escapement or with the traditional deadbeat escapement. The deadbeat is much more reliable. These clocks can be desktop mounted or they can hang on the wall. After the Coupe Purdue clock came the larger version of the separate motor driven clock SP9. And the secret of this one was a quiet stepper motor driver that was retrofitted, that it was retrofitted back into this design, but it, it was required for this design to make it quiet. But very shortly after I released this clock, I realized that there was room for extra gears on the back row and I released this clock, which I call the Crazy Gear desktop, desktop clock, SP10 and SP11. It's basically the same clock in different sizes. And I've recently released a, a top mount, which makes the, the frame a lot more stable. And then some replaceable inserts that can cover up the, the motor a little bit and you can customize them. The controller inside these two clocks uses a precision real-time clock that holds an accuracy of about a minute per year. After releasing the Crazy Gear clock, I decided to put those Crazy Gears, it's a different gear profile, I put it into SP12 in a large format, and then I went back to the original design and decided I want to make this much, much easier to build. So this is probably the most reliable of all of my clocks. It's SP13. It has a lot of new features that 
make it easier to print, easier to put together, and uses fewer components. It's got a much more reliable winding mechanism. This clock has an eight day runtime, similar to the very first clock, but it'll be a much more robust clock. And then the latest clock is the moon phase clock. This clock is the same size format as the crazy gear clock, but I went back to a traditional gear and then added a moon phase dial that will accurately reflect the phase of the moon. The accuracy of the moon phase dial is about one day in 2.7 years. All of the weight driven clocks will have an accuracy of one to two minutes per week and a runtime of eight days or longer. The, the pendulum driven desktop clocks have the, a similar accuracy of one to two minutes per week and all of the, the stepper motor driven clocks, starting with the small one and the larger ones, have an accuracy of about a minute per year. So my favorite clocks of all of these are really the, the crazy gear wall clock, the small wall clock, and the moon phase clock is my favorite right now. And also the, the crazy gear desk clock, probably the medium format. All of these clocks come with assembly guides that walk you through all of the steps of acquiring the extra parts and putting everything together and then debugging the clock. You can ask questions on my mini factory, my website forum, even a reply to this YouTube video. Lots of ways you can get a hold of me and I'll answer questions and help you out. Thanks for watching a quick description of all of my clocks and hope to see you on future videos. Thanks a lot, bye. Here's a quick follow-up after these clocks have been running for a couple of hours. Normally, a lot of these clocks are in storage. I don't have enough wall space to, to run them all, but all of the weight-driven clocks are still running uh, about three or four hours after I started making this video. And oh, of course, the stepper motor-driven clocks are reliable as can be I mean, because they always have power. And of the, the Coupe Purdue was the only clock that wasn't running. Uh, in fact, it looks like it made it about 45 minutes before stopping. But the Coupe Purdue with the deadbeat option is still running. I find this to be the most reliable option of the two. The electromagnetic pendulum clock is still running. I find this to be quite reliable. Uh, other people find it a little bit fiddly, but if you're interested in the reliability, stick with any of these clocks here for a wall-mounted clock or any of the stepper motor driven clocks. If you like a little bit of a challenge, go with the electromagnetic pendulum. It's a fairly robust design, should run a few months on a, a battery. So thanks a lot for watching and See you in the next video.